Welcome to this blog post about how to create a website layout. Now at this stage, you probably have a website design ready. You're ready to implement this website using both HTML and CSS and you want to get started. Now, what you need to make sure is you know your HTML tags, you know how CSS works, you know you've already got a website design and you've created your folder structure and you've already gathered some assets and made made some graphics for your website. Now, if you look at my project, my project is to create um, a website for an aqua park. So I've created my design, um, this is it. And I've also created my folder structure. Uh, looking at my folders, what I've done is I've basically have a website um, folder and inside that website folder, I've got a subfolder called images. And here I've saved plenty of graphics I'm going to use later on on my web page. Okay. Now, the first step now is to create the home page. And to do so, I'm going to work on the layout. Looking at my design, what I notice is the layout of my website consists um, of a header, a navigation bar, a main content area, a right panel, and a footer. Okay. And most websites will have a, a layout using some of these um, on their websites, maybe a left um, hand side, maybe a right hand side. Uh, they don't always have a navigation bar. They sometimes have a menu on the left hand side, uh, but they all have a layout, a specific layout. So let's look at the blog post. Um, here are some examples of layouts that um, could be used on websites. And the idea is to compare your design with those layouts to find the one that um, is the most similar. Now, in my case, I'm going to use that layout here. Header, navigation bar, main content, right panel and footer. Now, if I click on this picture, it's going to show me what the website will look like. Now, that's exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm now going to reuse that code. So I'm going to save this page into my website's folder. Right click on it, save page as. And I'm going to go to my website folder. I'm going to call this first page index.html and I'm going to save it as a web page. Perfect. Let's do that. So if I go back to my folder structure, I now have this page here and I'm going to edit this page with my um, editor. I'm using Notepad++. So this is all the code that um, was generated for me. Um, what we have to notice here is in the head section, I've got the CSS in the style element here, in the style tag. Um, I've got a page title. I'm going to change this straight away. In my case, I'm doing an aqua park. And then I've got the body of the page. Now, the body of the page contain all the sections. Um, a page header, and each section is in a div tag. A div tag. So a div tag is basically a container, or a box if you prefer. So I've got the page header, uh, a navigation bar, the page content, and the right panel, and then a footer. And all of these sections are into another div tag, uh, which includes everything. And this one has a class of page. Okay. Now the first thing we want to look at, if I um, save this page, is how does it look in my browser? So I'm going to run my code. I'm using Firefox here. And that's my web page. Okay. I'm now going to be willing to customize this layout. I may find that um, this width here is uh, not enough or that is too wide. So I'm going to change this. I may change the height. I may change definitely the colors. I'm not going to keep those pink colors um, throughout for my new website. Okay. So uh, what I've got to do is go back to my code. Now, looking at the width of the website, this website is 1000 pixels wide. Um, and the way um, I find out about this is looking at the main container. Remember, it was the page container and you've got the width here. So I can, if I want to change this to a different width. Okay. Similarly, I can change the height of it. Um, I've got to be careful though. If I do so, this will affect the different sections inside my um, page, such as the page header. Now the page header is 100%. So whatever width I'm using here, the page header will adjust to it. 
Uh, same for the navigation bar, which is 100% wide. Um, the right panel, however, I made it 200 pixels, which means the main content area has only got 800 pixels left to make it 1000. So if I was to change those, for instance, I want my right panel to be wider, I've got to make sure that both of these together, they still add up to 1000. So I'm going to make this one 700, for instance. Let's save this and see how it impacts the design. So the width is 1000 pixels. This to start with was 200 and this section here 800. I've changed the code, so I'm going to refresh refresh the page. And you see this is now 300 pixels and this is now 700 pixels. Okay, so that's the first types of changes you can make to your website, um, changing the different dimensions. And you can also do that with the, the heights of the different sections, but try to be um, careful when you do so. For instance, the right panel and the page contents should have the same height uh, because they're next to each other on mine. Okay, and then my footer I can make um, thinner if I need to. Next thing I want to change are the colors. And you can notice that each section has its own background color. So that will be quite easy to change. And the body of the page, so the whole page, has its own background color as well. So by changing those settings, I will be able to change uh, my background colors. Now, I tend to use a website called colorpicker.com because it lets me pick any color that I want to for my website. Now, if you remember, mine was fairly um, blue uh, for my theme park. So I'm going to use colors from that template here. Let's use that first color code. I'm going to copy that color code and I'm going to use it in my code uh, for the background of the page. I'm going to paste that here. Okay, if I save this, I should be able to see the impact on my Aquapark website. Here we go. Perfect. I've changed it to a dark blue on the back. I'm going to change those sections now one at a time, still using my color picker, using different color. For instance, my navigation bar, I want it to be um, of a green color, a bit more. That's it. So I'm going to use that for my navigation bar. And then I will do the same for every other sections of the website. Where is my navigation bar? Um, let's scroll down. Page header, navigation bar, that's the one here. So I'm changing the background color, um, saving this. And I'm now going to do the same. Um, I'm going to pause this video and do the same for every sections to show you the changes to my website. And that's it. That's the new website with the new color scheme, uh, which is matching my design. Okay, uh, another technique we may want to use is instead of using plain colors, we sometimes want to use gradients um, because they make like a, a nicer effect. And it's fairly easy to do gradients in CSS. Um, the idea is to use what we call a gradient generator. So if you go into Google, type CSS gradient um, generator. Here we go, it comes up. Um, the one I tend to use is from Colorzilla. And it gives you plenty of existing gradients. Um, some of them are quite cool. They do like a glass effect um, or a shining effect. Um, you may not find exactly the one you're looking for, um, though they've got quite a wide range of gradients. But you can customize these gradients and you can make your own gradient anyway. So all of these little handles here, you can change their colors um, to do whatever gradient you want. And you can, um, oops, I need to press OK to that. Um, so you can make your gradient um, the way you want. And you can add as many colors as you want um, to make really complex gradient. Now I'm just showing you here, but that's not really what I want to do. I don't really want to do a rainbow effect. So I'm going to delete that um, color here. Uh, that's it. I'm going to keep this actually, see what happens here. And I'm going to delete this one here. I'm going to keep that gradient. Once you've done it, you can choose um, the direction of your gradient. You can make it diagonal, um, horizontal. I'm going to keep it to vertical. Um, and then it gives you all the code here. Now I don't really need the comments. I'm just going to now 
copy all of this code here and I'm going to use that into the CSS of my um, sections that I want the gradient to apply to. So I could either use that for my footer, for instance, or I could paste my code over there instead of the background color. Um, in this case, I'm actually going to use it for the body of my website and I'm going to paste that here. Okay, so a large section of code. I don't really have to, to fully understand it, but basically it's doing the gradient from the starting color to the ending color here. And it's got multiple lines because some browsers um, don't understand the same CSS code. So Mozilla, Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, they all use their own um, definition of a gradient. So if I save this, I should be able to see, I'm not sure I'm going to like what I'm going to see here, but I'm going to have a go at it. I'm going to refresh the page and that's it. I've got my gradient um, on this section here. Okay, uh, I don't know if we like it or not. I may not keep that gradient, I may do another one. Um, as I said, you can customize it. You can um, use an existing one. I'm actually going to go for an existing one, I think. Um, maybe let me choose. Um, something maybe like this one here. Yeah, I'm going to use this one here, see what happens. So I'm going to highlight all this code. Oops, only the code, so from here. Copy this and I'm going to replace it with what I've added here. So I'm going to delete this here. And I'm going to paste this new code that I've just copied. Let's save this and let's see if it looks any better on my website. I don't really like what I've done here. Yeah, okay, I'm going to keep that for now. Um, and it was just to show you how to use gradient, okay. Um, another technique that I really like is the idea of using shadows. So sometimes you want your website to have a shadow to give it a bit of a 3D effect. So once again, to use shadow, the idea is to use um, back to Google here um, is to use a CSS, not a gradient generator this time, but a shadow generator. Perfect. Um, now there are quite a few of them. I'm going to try this one here, CSS Matic. And hopefully it will let me customize. Now it gives you a preview here of the shadow you can generate. Um, you can change a lot of the settings um, for your shadow. Uh, you can change the border radius, how blurry, the blurring, sorry, the blur, um, how spread your shadow is. So I want a fairly thin one. And once you're happy with it, you can even change the color of your shadow. If you're happy with your shadow, just copy this bit of code here. And once again, decide which section do you want a shadow for. I'm going to use a shadow for the whole page, so all of this. I could use a shadow just for the navigation bar or just for the main content, but I'm actually going to use it for the whole page. So in my code, uh, where it says page, uh, that's it. I've got a lot of settings here that I'm going to leave, but I'm going to paste the shadow code that I've got. Let's save this and let's see what happens to my website here when I reload it. Perfect. Now you see that shadow effect. I do think it, it looks nice. It does um, make the web page stand out a bit more. Um, so I think these are really cool steps. Now my website is starting to look a lot more like my design. Okay, I've done that very quickly. It actually looks a bit better because I didn't think about using a shadow in my design. Um, and I didn't use a gradient either. So I've already done some improvements. Next step, well, I'm going to start importing, importing all my images for my buttons, for my logo, for my H1 um, header, for my paragraphs, and for every section of the website. Okay, so I will do that going into, not the CSS anymore, but this time I'm going to scroll down to the body of the page that's my page header. So later on, that's where I'm going to put my logo using an IMG tag. Uh, I'll let you carry that later on. Uh, my navigation bar, I'm going to put all my buttons. So same again, IMG, 
Um, and then I'm going to put the different buttons for which I've got pictures in my images folder. And then here I'm going to say welcome to um, Aqua Park. And then I'm going to say we are the number one uh, Aqua Park. Oops in the UK. Okay, um, that's where the content of my website is going. Pictures, text, maybe video clips and so on. So let's save this. I know it's a lot of content in one video here. Let's refresh this page here. Um, and that's it. My website is starting to appear and to have content. Um, later on, I'm going to look at CSS to customize my H1 tag um, and to customize my paragraph to make it maybe white text and so on. Um, so that I can always add some CSS, for instance, for my H1 tag. So back to my style here. Um, for instance, the H1, I wanted the H1 um, to have a yellow color. So I'm going to define the color to be yellow and I know the color code for yellow but otherwise I would use color picker um, to find that. Okay, um, same again, all my paragraphs, I may want them to appear in white. Um, I can define that in the page content actually. I can put here that the text color per default will be white. Okay, um, Otherwise, I can do what I've done here. I can use the P tag and then define a color of white over there. Two ways I can do this. So if I save this, I can now go to my web page, refresh and see what happened. Perfect. Well, step by step, I'm getting there. The idea is to spend a lot of time playing with the content, adding the pictures, a bit of CSS to customize the look and feel but we're soon going to get our web page fully done. Excellent work. I'm going to stop that video for now. And um, well, good luck with your web design and your implementation in HTML and CSS.